Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, pre presenting uh, Professor Nihal Shakankiri. Uh, she's uh, uh, one of the best uh, pediatric surgeons uh, in Egypt, and uh, she's the founder of uh, Pediatric uh, Ophthalmology uh, uh, Center in Alexandria University. And uh, uh, she was uh, named one of the best 100 uh, Egyptian women uh, last year from uh, President, uh, uh, our President Sisi. Uh, and uh, she always, uh, 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 I, uh, we are pleased always to hear from her uh, the nice lectures. She will present a microspherophilia in a pediatric uh, uh, surgeries, uh, emergencies in children. Okay. okay. Um, I would like to thank you for a kind invitation for me to participate in your meeting, and I'm going to present microspherophakia as a pediatric ocular emergency. Microspherophakia is a small spherical lens. It is variable in size. It may be small, it may be large, and variable in the degree of sphericity. It may be as a total sphere, or maybe sometimes a sphere from the center, and uh, it is flat from the periphery. Uh, the zonules may be totally intact, or maybe elongated, or maybe disrupted. Uh, clinical presentation, the child usually presents with tremulous iris, shallow anterior chamber, due to the increase in anteroposterior diameter of the lens, as you see here with the UBM, the large anteroposterior diameter in relation to a very shallow anterior chamber. And the red reflex in these infants, usually it is bright in the center and at the periphery here at the edge of the pupil, it is dark. Or it presents with a glistening edge at the side here of the pupil. And this glistening edge may extend 360 degrees and you should uh, differentiate between the microspherophakia and the congenital cataract, the lamellar opacity, which does not shine, the edge is not shining. Here again, this is a microspherophakia and this is a congenital cataract. And sometimes you see it bright against red reflex, the shining edge of the microspherophakia. Uh, the pupil may be dilatable and you can see the lens perfectly. And sometimes the pupil doesn't dilate. Can you see here, there is fibrosis at the edge of the pupil. Here, this is again fibrosis that prevent good dilatation of the pupil and it can be misdiagnosed. Here again, this is fibrosis of the pupil. It may be associated with megalocornea and the corneal circumference may be circular or maybe elliptical. It may present with a very high myopia, the child coming with a very high myopia. And in these children, look at the edge of the pupil, you can see the edge of the microspherophakic lens. And here presenting with a high myopia, if you look here against red reflex, you can see the microspherophakia. And some children may present when the lens subluxate, they may present with a very high astigmatism and sometimes a very high myopia and very high astigmatism, which is lenticular origin, may be associated with systemic anomalies as vile Marquisani syndrome with short square hand or square feet, may be associated with homocystinuria with morphinoid features. And why it is considered as an ocular emergency? Because it may dislocate easily into the anterior chamber, causing damage to the back surface of the cornea. It may dislocate and become adherent to the back surface of the cornea like that and become cataractus. And here a child with dislocated microspherophakia, his father is totally blind from the same condition or may dislocate into the posterior segment. As you see here in this child in the left eye, it is dislocated into the anterior chamber. And the very next day, it dislocates into the posterior uh, segment in and out until it's settled down into the, into the anterior, the, the back surface, um, into the posterior segment. And you can see here pigmentation denoting Sheffer sign due to a giant retinal tear and start of PVR. It may present with all types of secondary glaucoma. That's why it is considered as an ocular emergency. When it subluxate, 
It may present with a secondary angle closure glaucoma with iridocorneal contact, and here severe and long-standing iridocorneal contact due to subluxated microspherophakia. It may cause papillary block glaucoma and become cataractous and may dislocate into the anterior chamber here, causing again glaucoma with severe corneal edema sometimes. It may present with a long-standing papillary block glaucoma associated with iris atrophy and a very long-standing papillary block glaucoma associated with ciliary staphyloma. And here the mother is totally blind from the same condition. This is the microspherophakia, and here is ciliary staphyloma. It may be associated with um, AC dysgenesis as Peter um, uh, as Rager, Axenfield anomaly here associated with microspherophakia. And apart from the glaucoma that is associated with AC dysgenesis, it may cause papillary block glaucoma or may present since birth. Why? Due to uh, corneolenticular adhesion. And here after lensectomy, the child here before and few months after surgery, one, the, in one eye, the pressure was controlled and in the other eye, it needed trabeculectomy. It may also present with iris anomalies as, for example, iris coloboma with or without corneal touch or glaucoma that is caused by congenital aniridia with or without iridolenticular adhesion or may present with total blindness, shallow anterior chamber, lost anterior chamber, a large corneal diameter and corneolenticular adhesion. Sometimes it is misdiagnosed as a primary congenital glaucoma, as in this child. She had two glaucoma surgeries, but what you see, the, the, the etiology is a microspherophakia. Why it is misdiagnosed? Because the pupil is undilatable. So in any case of congenital glaucoma, you have to go for a UBM to exclude the presence of microspherophakia. And here, uh, a refractory a glaucoma, and the etiology, again, here is a microspherophakia. So management. In these cases, once diagnosed, you have to go for lensectomy. We go for lensectomy through two corneal wounds, and then we make the anterior capsule rexis, and then hydrodissection, hydrodelineation, irrigation, aspiration, and then the capsular bag has to be eaten totally, anterior vitrectomy, and here at conclusion of surgery. Even if you have sometimes difficulties in surgery, for example, in performing the anterior capsular axis, you may penetrate the lens with the MVR and then complete the rexis in the conventional way. And sometimes you make what is called ufferth anterior capsular axis. How to perform it in a very shallow anterior chamber? We hold the anterior capsule and we push forward and then we push towards the wound, you're going to have a, a beautiful anterior capsular axis or half offered capsular axis, push forward, push forward and then complete in the conventional way and then complete the surgery, irrigation aspiration and the capsular bag eaten up and here at conclusion of surgery. In some cases that you have a very small microspherophakia, you can hold the lens with a special forceps and then you do the rexes while holding the lens. Now you have a beautiful small rexes, hydrodissection, hydrodelineation, irrigation aspiration, and then the small capsular bag is eaten up with a cutter and here, at conclusion of surgery, you close these tiny wounds through, uh, you go for surgery through anterior approach. What if you have the lens subluxated? You can hold the lens from the start, initiate the tear, and keep on holding the lens while performing the anterior capsular axis. And you can even use a hook to centralize the lens and then perform the hydrodissection, hydrodelineation, irrigation, aspiration. Look here after. Irrigation aspiration, look, the zonules are disrupted, but no vitreous did prolapse. So there is no fluctuation of the anterior chamber. And this denotes that you did a very simple surgery without disrupting the anterior vitreous space, lowering the incidence of retinal detachment in the future, and then complete the surgery. It has a beautiful advantage. If you have here, can you see keratola? This is iridolenticular adhesion and total disruption of the zonules, when you go for the same thing, here, hooking of the lens, can you see this cave? 
you can inject here hydrodissection. So it's a perfect hydrodissection and you can do, go for a very easy irrigation aspiration and eating up the bag. And even you can make a viscodissection at the end of surgery to these adhesions. This is unlike the microfacia with congenital cataract. You can leave a capsular support in the future here. Can you see this is the edge of the lens and these are the zonules for secondary IOL implantation here with magnification, the edge of the lens, the edge of the uh, summary ring and the zonules. And even in these microfacia, you can go for IOL implantation between the two rexes. But this is not applicable in the cases of microspherophakia. Don't be tempted by a large, beautiful capsular bag to leave like that a capsular support. What's going to happen? A few months after surgery, you will see this total collapse of the capsular bag because the zonules are extremely weak. They cannot withstand the capsular, the fibrosis of the capsular bag. This is another case that you have to go again for surgery to clear the visual axis. After surgery, we have immediately a deep anterior chamber. We fit the babies with aphecic spectacles, ultra thin high definition or multifocal aphecic spectacles in older children. And sometimes in some cases when you don't have glaucoma, for example, here a dislocated and a subluxated microspherophakia, you can go for secondary iris claw lens implantation in the future and ensure a very good uh, grip. This is five years after surgery and 10 years after surgery. This is with secondary glaucoma, papillary block glaucoma, here before at conclusion of surgery, immediately after surgery, before and after surgery, the pressure was controlled in one eye and the other eye was preserved. Here, you have to go for examination of the siblings. We did a surgery for her brother, a few months after surgery, his mm -hmm. glaucoma free. So finally, to conclude, microspherophakia may present with myopia, high astigmatism, but the most common complication are anterior and posterior dislocation with all types of glaucomas, congenital and acquired. So it is considered as a pediatric ocular emergency. And thank you very much for your kind attention.